Hi there, welcome to today's episode of 700 Club Nigeria. I am Barine Bosi. And I am Ethel Ikwe Adiremi. We are truly glad to have you with us today. Yes, we are. Because today we'll be looking at stories that will leave us in wonder of God's love. Now here is the story of Elisha Maide, a woman who grew up knowing a particular demon in her village as God, until she had an encounter with the one true God. My mom dedicated all of our children to the marine deity. From after I signed the dotted line, I do all hell broke loose. 2015 is a decisive year for our nation. Nigeria is hanging on a precipice, and if we do not get it right, God forbid our nation will not be doomed in Jesus' name. Elishama Rosemary Ide is an evangelist, a philanthropist, and a minister. She is the founder of Christ the Ever-Present Ministries and Partnership for a New Nigeria, both in Lagos State, Nigeria. She is indeed a leading light for the gospel, but that had not always been the case. I was born into a background of idolatry. My household had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. At birth, my mom, after having a, you know, any child, she goes to the river and she dedicates that child to the marine deity. At birth, she had covenanted me to the devil. She had even told the devil that um, I'm the bride of Satan. Um, they had told her, make sure she does not get married and she's not gonna have any children in this world. And why did she make this covenant according to her? She had all boys. She needed a daughter desperately, and um, they told her to go and make some rituals by the riverside. And um, she went to do that, and they told her, okay, after that, go do, they call it um, Sarah. You know, you do some things, you give to people, you give them sweet, you give them biscuits and all that. They said, go, go gather some children together. The number of female that appears among those children will tell you how many daughters you're going to have. She said she gathered all these children and only one daughter appeared. So she knew she was going to have one. And that one girl was Elishama. Elishama and her siblings had a very torrid childhood. And their mother kept leading them to do certain things. She gave us all these pots, special pots. They call it Olokun pot. So as soon as uh, she has a child, one pot is dedicated to that, to that child. And you, as an individual and as a person, needs to be feeding that pot every day of your life with water, with gin, and with the blood of uh, chicken or whatever. So our life was in bondage by the reason of that ritual. Yet, the consequences were bearable until I got married. That was when the covenant she made began to speak against me. And I knew something was terribly wrong because my late husband of blessed memory, um, we scream out at night from his dream. And he would turn to me be like, who are you? I'd be like, who am I? Your wife, of course. What, do, what sort of question is that? I said, because some forces were beating me throughout the dream and they said I took the king's wife. They would take him physically. He would disappear from my bed and go and throw him somewhere. It was that serious. Elishama and her husband tried to get pregnant. And when the pregnancies came, there were always complications. The first pregnancy, I had our first child but that child died like um, after two weeks of birth. And it was then that we knew the forces we were dealing with. And one day my husband was just pouring out his heart to a neighbor, you know, across the street from where we were living, that this is what my wife is going through, this is what I'm going through. And the neighbor was like, all you guys need is Jesus. She took us to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, got us to meet at the Boye, who is very familiar <laughs> with my story and my background. And um, he ministered Christ to us. We began to learn the heart of spiritual warfare. 
and learn the word because I found out that you cannot fight the devil without the word. Elishama and her husband started fighting, praying with the word of God, and things began to change. Our lives, you know, became changed. We became workers in church. And um, my life was just entrenched in the things of the spirit. My husband and I, a couple of months down the line, I got pregnant again, and we had our first child, Vanessa. When I had her, precisely 21 days later, the enemy attempted again to try to come and take her. I was, Jesus help me, Jesus help me. They must not take my child. And immediately the Spirit of God told me, he said, they're not gonna take her. Look at her. And as soon as I looked at the court, I saw an invisible hand lifting her from the court taking her, took her to the ceiling and covered her up there. And uh, that was a major, major, major one for me in that season of my life. And she's a graduate right now. She graduated with first class. I'm so excited to say that, I'm always saying it. That was when I began to receive the ministry I received of the Lord. The core calling of my ministry is uh, to cater to the less privileged, the needy, the abandoned, the destitute, the drug addicts, the orphans, the street girls, uh, people that you and I generally would not want to as associate with. They have become street children, vagabonds, and these are the people that turn to arm robbers. These are the people that will come and trouble you and I, <laughs> you know, in our environment, if nothing is done about them. These are the people that will find their ways into the system later and begin to cause a whole lot of trouble to the nation. That began to stir up my uh, uh, spirit for a change to effect a social order, you know, in that area. And that was how partnership for a new Nigeria was battered. And from there, God has done many great things with Elishama. She says, At every level, the Lord gave victory. There is no doubt that demons are real. If you have made covenants with them or you play around with them, there definitely will be consequences. There will be terrible dreams and even physical attacks and suffering. And many times, it is not limited to you alone. Loved ones around you suffer as well. It could well be that you are in such a situation right now, so you understand very clearly what I'm talking about. But Jesus is by far greater than the devil and all his demons put together. Maybe evil forces have dealt terrible blows on you, leaving you helpless and hopeless. Well, help and hope are available here and now. Maybe, like Elishama said, you're a good, righteous Christian, but you're still suffering these things. It is time to rise and appropriate the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time to make sure you know the Word of God. It is time to have a personal work with Jesus. And we are right here to help and support you.